We are now looking at the six honest signals of coins and for that I will look at the email archive of last year's coins class. So I will switch the database to coins course 2013. I will load a data set which I have already prepared which contains the merged actors from the different teams and I have a total of 143. I can now choose a smaller number of actors. I can also reduce um, the time period which I'm, uh, I'm analyzing. So for example I will only start in 2013, in September 2013. And then, and I will end in February 2014. I will only take the top 120 actors. And that will get me my data set into the working memory of Condor. I can now first merge the actors, meaning that I have people that have been using more than one um, email address, so I can say node merging, manual node merging. I can, for example, search for myself. So it seems I'm here only with one email address, but I already see that Priscilla, Priscilla Mendoza, she is here three times. So I will say merge her. I see that Petri is here only once but um, I might see other people that are in here more than once. So I sort it by name and then uh, for example, she is the same person. Amelia Gösser is the same person. Andreas Zerbe seems to be the same person. And so I can keep on merging names. I can also remove actors. Here I have some dummy actors, which I don't need anymore. So um, I will say remove specific actors. And I think those coin courses, they are not that interesting because they are dummy actors. So I will put them on the list to be deleted. I also might have some other um, actors which are not that interesting, um, like these non-reply actors. So I will remove those also. And now I can just have a quick peek at the network. Here it is. But for now, and I can also color it by data set. So here I see the different um, teams by color. But for now, let me close it. Because when I close the visualization, the processing is faster. So now I will do the annotation. I will calculate between the centrality. I will calculate degree centrality. I will calculate between us oscillation that measure the rotating leadership. And I will set the time interval to 15 days. That will calculate the oscillations. I will calculate the contribution index. I will calculate arbitrated variance in contribution index. I will calculate turn taking with a time interval of four days. And I will calculate the graph density. And now I'm ready to look at the structural properties of the file. So when I now open it again, and I can again color it by the different data sets because that's the most interesting picture. And now I can size it. Let's first make sure I only have circles, also for the merged actors. And now when I size it by betweenness centrality, you see that Peter is the biggest person and Anachronas is the second biggest. 
You also see here some coloring by teams. I can now also see who is the most creative person, for example, by saying um, between the centrality oscillation. Suddenly Peter isn't so creative anymore, but there is others that have been very much changing in their position. So um, if I want to see how this looks in a dynamic view, I can just um, get the movie and do it without history. And I say again, I want the time interval of 15 days. And now I will get the movie. And I can again say I want only circles. And I might want the colors. Now when I hit the play button and make it a little bit faster, we will see how this changes over time. I can also zoom it out and move it up. So now we see how those teams change over time and that connections to the most central person, Peter, in the core, they come and go away. So we have some oscillations in the uh, between a centrality. Another way of looking at the same thing is I can look at the actor scatter plot. And so the first thing that we do here is normally contribution index. So I will plot on the x axis all the messages, on the y axis all the contribution index values, and I will color it by a original data set again. So this is not Peter, this is Anna. She is the most active person, remember, X emails sent and received. So she has sent and received a total of 1,100 messages. And she is pretty well balanced. She sends a little bit more than she receives. Yoshi Wang, he has gotten a little bit less. And then Norman and Pascal, they send more. Peter also sends a little bit more than he receives. So here we can look at those. Um, contribution indices, but we can now also look at um, how many nudges it takes until somebody responds. So Anna Karna sends so much that it takes her only 1.6 nudges until she responds, so it's pretty responsive. This person here, Casey Kern, he is much less responsive. It takes him 3.5 nudges until he responds. And we can look who is the most creative compared to overall activity. So we look at the between the centrality oscillations. And so we see, for example, this person here, Yoshi, he is pretty creative. He has a lot of emails, but he also has a lot of between oscillations. This person here gets Tim Schumacher. His creativity with only 350 emails. He has more changes in leadership than Anna, who is here. So this is a quick way of seeing the most active, the most leadership changing people. Now we can also look at um, the content for that. I close the um, network view and I will process the content. So I will say calculate sentiment and I will take the content field to analyze and I will add emotionality and complexity. And now this is running for some time. I have 10,000 email messages. So this will now do the sentiment analysis I have been describing before. It means first the program has to figure out what language we are using. Condor can do English, German, Spanish and French. And then it will take a bag of words and it will map each email message against the bag of word for the identified language and this way get the positivity and negativity and emotionality and complexity of each email and of each person. So now we can look at the aggregated view. How is the sentiment over time changing? And what we see here, 
the sentiment is the red line, it goes down. It starts at 0.6 and here we have some low line just before students had to hand in their final projects. The uh, positivity goes down. We also see activity. Those bursts that you see, the green line is the activity, are always before an assignment is due. And then here, around Christmas time, we have very low activity. Students are not working, shockingly, over Christmas. We can look at emotionality. We see that um, it's pretty steady. So there is always positivity and negativity. It's on 0.25, which means it's pretty emotional. And the complexity is also around 0.1. It measures how um, positive and negative it is. We can also look at the static view. And now we can see who is the most positive person. So I will again have only circles. And when I say, show me size by sentiment, so this person here is pretty positive, and this person is pretty positive, and this one also. If we want to look at their attributes, we can always say, show no details. Then we see all the attributes here. And here we can also um, calculate influence. So I'm now closing that view and I'm calculating the influence. This will create a new data set and at the same time calculate the influence of each person. The new data set will be the influence network and here we have it. So now we can look who is the most influential person. Um, now we have only this group here. Now this is not surprising, the teacher is pretty influential, but let's now look at the size of those networks. And so we get here this total influence. And I'm not in the top most influential person. Anna Kronas is the most influential one. And Norman and Pascal are pretty influential. And if we look at the influence per message, then with very few messages, Emmanuel has executed a lot of influence on the others. 